Is this administration losing its fight against corruption? President Buhari and Vice President Oshiba react. And in a dull state, protest erupts over Obaseki's alleged request for a 20 billion naira loan. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeindi. Welcome back. This is Plus Politics. Subsequent to the suspension and ongoing probe of the former acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, the presidency has reiterated that President Muhammadu Buhari's commitment to eradication of corruption in Nigeria. But while the presidency made the assurance in response to the criticism that greeted Magu's probe, Vice President Yemi Oshibaju has stated that the fight against corruption in the country may continue to get difficult on a daily basis and that to win the war against the menace, whistleblowers must be protected. Joining us to throw more light on this conversation and so many issues around corruption is the Executive Chairman Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, KAKO, that's Debo Adeniro. You're welcome. Good evening. Thank you very much. And also joining us in this conversation is Nelson Ekujumi, who is a political analyst and, of course, a public affairs analyst. Good to have you, Nelson. Good evening, Kadi. It's a pleasure being on your studio, on, on your station, sorry. Yeah, it's as good as also being in our studio. I can see that uh, you had to pack on the road to be part of this conversation. Let me start with uh, Mr. Debo Adeniro. Uh, I know that you must have made a series of comments over what is going on with the trial. Or, or some people call it pro, but people felt this is not a trial, spending this number of days while being interrogated. What's your immediate take when uh, uh, the EFCC acting chairman or former acting chairman was uh, interrogated? Well, first and foremost, um, it's like uh, chicken coming from to roost. You know, we expected it because uh, all along, when Magu came to uh, came to office, uh, he knew he was not under the illusion that uh, he was going to have it smooth. I mean, as a smooth sail, and he actually said it then that uh, nobody. Okay, uh, I'm sure the network will reconnect. Let let me talk to you, Nelson, while we're trying to get him back. Uh, a lot of things are happening. The PDP has spoken that uh, this is the true reflection of what President Muhammad Buhari's administration is all about, that is full of hypocrisy. And now that we have what we have is a sign that this government is just fighting corruption with just uh, lip service. What's your take? Well, uh, thank you very much. I think my response to the to that statement uh, credited to the PDP is that you know it is ludicrous for a political party that is supposed to symbolize civility and you know um, sensitivity to the uh, psyche of the people to come out and display more mentality. What this uh, tr uh, investigation of Mr. Ibrahim Magu, the acting, the former acting EFCC chairman, has uh, shown is that the government is trying to, you know, to make it clear that nobody is above the law. And uh, we are all aware that under the Constitution of Nigeria, only four categories of persons, you know, have immunity, you know, from, you know, trial and, you know, uh, prosecution. And that is the president, the vice president, the governors, and the deputy governors. So if the government, in its wisdom, has found reasons to investigate a senior officer, a symbol of his anti-corruption war, I think, I don't think it is going out of place, you know, uh, for us to, you know, but to commend that government, you know, for taking that bold step. But be that as it may, I expect, like millions of Nigerians, that, you know, the series of allegations against uh, Mr. Magu, which we have been fed from the media rather than from the investigative panel. We don't know whether what the media has reported, whether it's the true situation of things, because even today, 
a new tabloid had to apologize for, a, a, you know, a libel a publication against a senior advocate of Nigeria. So at times, we, you know, we get fed with stories that we find it difficult to believe. But be that as it may, we want to wait and see what will be the outcome of that investigative panel. But okay. as it is, the uh, investigation of Mr. Magu, you know, for me, unlike uh, Mr. Deba, you know, you know we, some of us least expected it, you know, even though we knew very well that, you know, the man, you know, was going to step on toes immediately came in, and which he had rightly done. So uh, all our sinners have been through that. Team. So, but we Nigerians are resol resolute that, you know, the fight against corruption must be realistic, it must be rational, it must not be based on phony or bogus allegations which cannot be substantiated. Okay. And so far, we, we want to keep our fingers crossed Nelson. and watch how the proceedings will go Nelson. and whatever will be the outcome if it will meet, you know, N uh, logical and rational standards. N Nelson, let me stay with you while we're trying to establish connection with uh, Debo. Uh, uh, let's look deeply what the vice president said recently when he was delivering lecture organized by the ICPC. He mentioned some critical issues that has to do with corruption will stay longer if some steps are not taken. Some of the things he said is that we have the issue of tax evasion, we have the issue of money laundering, we have even terrorism financing. That's quite terrible. But before we even go into the steps in fighting this corruption, can we look at some other issues that probably is making PDB to come up with these allegations? We have the issue of the former MD of NDDC looking, you know, looking straight in the camera and allegedly exposing the minister, uh, uh, um, the minister of Niger Delta. Uh, do you think that all these things are just happening because it's taking too much time for the president to take necessary step? No, I don't think it is taking too much time. What we should be concerned about as citizens is for us to ensure that a man who is innocent does not suffer based on mere on allegations that has not been substantiated. We should recognize the fact that we are living in a civilized committee of nations. And it builds on us in our conduct, you know, to make sure we, we are at par with that standard. So these allegations coming up against some members of the administration tells you clearly that when I just went to the polls in 2019, as well as in 2015, we didn't go there to vote for angels. We went there to vote for human beings like you and I. And we are very sure like you all know that, you know, sin, like we always say, is the second nature of a, of a human being. So it is not impossible that some persons in getting into public office, even in the administration that has, you know, uh, launched the war against corruption frontally, that we will still have some black, in, black legs. You know, don't forget, Jesus had 12 disciples and we had a Judas. So it is not impossible that some people might, you know, might have sold their hands or might have, you know, put their hand in the public till. So it is important for us that when we have these allegations, what we should be demanding of, or what we should be demanding for, is that those allegations must be substantiated with fact. I want to remind Nigerians that not quite long ago, four undergraduates of the University of Port Harcourt were killed, you know, because they were labeled as armed robbers. Meanwhile, those young guys went somewhere to retrieve a debt, allegedly hold one of them. And that was how the four of them... So we should divorce ourselves from this mob mentality okay. that when they call anybody, when they label anybody, Thank you. we don't want to wait to say, oh, where are the facts? We want to rush to judgment. I don't think any civilized society must behave that I'll, way. I'll and I know back. that Nigerians are very, very civilized. I'll come so back for to me, that. anybody saying that, you know, this is a, 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 an image or this portrays what the administration is all about, that means that person is an Alice in Wonderland. Because I know very well that the people in the administration are Nigerians like you and I. They reflect our mentality. They reflect our civility. They reflect, you know, all those things that we represent as okay. a people. Because I'm sure there's nobody in the Nelson, present administration who is not Nelson, a Nigerian. Nelson, you, you've, you've opened quite a lot of visitors of issues that we will stay on. Now, you've mentioned something very critical. And if you say Nigerians are going on a mob action, we've seen this in other climes. When we have this kind of gangantuan uh, allegations, we see them, people even volunteering to step aside or even resign. But this hardly happens. And we're saying, where is the change? No, uh, Karade, in those other climes that we have mentioned, when people are making these allegations, 
Immediately, they are making the allegations. They are substantiating it with facts. But in this case, we have seen a series of allegations that have been unsubstantiated. Just uh, like I told you earlier on, somebody said uh, Mr. Ibrahim Agu gave $4 billion naira to the vice president. Until date, he has just mounted those allegations. He has not provided evidence to stop saying, will we say because somebody has alleged, even without fact, we now rush to say the vice president should resign or he should be suspended from office. I, I think that would be a big distraction to the, to, you know, to the art of governance. But, you know, like we say, he who, who alleges the owners of proving... You know, but like what about... what about? So if anybody has realized... Uh, sorry, I mean, sorry to bolt in. What about issues of uh, uh, corruption in NDDC and what we get is personal attack? Yes, those issues about corruption in NDDC. You know, even if we want to prosecute those, corrupt, those uh, cases, we cannot prosecute them within the confines of our room or within the confines of your studio. They have to be talking to the court of law. And in the court of law, those instances have to be proven beyond reasonable doubt for us to get conviction, or else we'll be taking a walk in the park. So if we have alleged that there are uh, corruption in NDDC, it is for us to gather the facts. It is for us to empower the relevant agencies of state who are saddled with that responsibility. Because you and I know very well that the act of corruption is a violation of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And whoever you know, engages in that, there's a penalty for it. So if people have been alleged you know, to have, to have uh, been involved in corruption, it is not left for us as the government of the day to ensure that all the facts are gathered. If we have given somebody 10 naira to perform a job, and the person has, you know, has come back to tell us that the 10 naira is exhausted, and we cannot find where he has spent the money, then it behoves on us to, you know, to make sure he, he accounts for it. And the only way we can make sure he accounts for it is for us you know, to prosecute based on that fact that, look, you were given X, Y on X date. You said you have done this. Come and provide evidence of what you have done. If you cannot provide evidence of what you have done, that means, you know, you have mismanaged that funds. So that is an evidence. But in this case, we are, we've continually had allegations. For me, as a, as a civilized Democrat, it is for these allegations, you know, to be concretized, you know, with relevant facts and evidence. And that, on that I stand. Okay, on that you stand. Let's look at what the vice president suggested in ways of fighting corruption. At least these are the people in power. They have some kind of information that we can leverage on. He mentioned the fact that we have to make corruption unattractive. We have to make corruption quite expensive to embark on. How practicable do you think this, or what do you think uh, uh, the vice president could have meant by that? Well, to fight corruption involves a lot of methods. If you look at our society today, the rise in corruption is due to the social economic circumstances. This is the only society or one of the few societies I know where somebody, whereby it is only when you are in the system that you are taking care of immediately, you are out you're on your own. Somebody who has worked for 35 years or has attained the age of 60, by the time he retires, how does he get his pension and gratuities? You, we, are, we are all witnesses to the pains and agony that, you know, retirees have gone through. The unemployed people, what are we doing to mitigate, you know, their, their economic difficulties? So there are lots of ways we can, you know, fight corruption. And these are some of the issues which we address as a people. Also, the, pres the vice president talked about those, uh, you know, uh, those indices. There's also the need to make transparency a, a watchword in government, such that if a job is to be awarded, it should be in the public domain. <coughs> We should know whoever is you know, getting that job. We should know, we should have every details about him at the price of a button. But a situation whereby, you know, uh, getting information from government, even with the FOI Act, you know, it's like uh, it is easier for the camera to pass through the eye of the needle. Makes, you know, corruption a fight for a select few of those in government. Until we get the average Nigerian person, until we change their mentality, and that should start from the home. Because as we speak now, we have a very, very debased culture. We have a society today we live in where people want to become rich, but we don't want to work for it. Hmm. Uh, that I, is why, just before now, the acting FCC chairman <clears throat> said the, that someone... Oh, I hope we are not losing network with Nelson now. I, I, I want to believe that we have Debo. <laughs> Yes, uh, like um, I was saying, when I heard about the arrests, 
I just took it with a equanimity that uh, that is so what is not unexpected of uh, uh, those who have always been at the uh, at the receiving end of Magus action, and those are the corrupt elements within the society. They can go to any length to ensure that the EFCC, the agency is decapitated to the extent that they will be able to escape the long hand of the law. It is in Nigeria that uh, public exposed persons are not in a hurry to discharge themselves of the baggage of uh, corruption. Um, what we saw was just uh, a, a, an end to an era but that has been the pattern from the beginning of the EFCC. It happened to Nuhuri Badu, it happened to Lamode, it happened to Madame Farida Waziri, now it is the turn of Mago. But what the state needs to do, the presidency needs to do, is to protect that office. It doesn't matter what anybody says about the EFCC. EFCC has been at the forefront or the fight against corruption in this country. And they have made a lot of uh, change in the area of uh, uh, commission of corruption crimes. And the fear of EFCC has been, become the beginning of uh, wisdom for those who engage in corruption crimes. And that is because the leaders of the, 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 the successive leaders of the agency has been up about and doing. Uh, we cannot uh, predetermine whether Magu will be found guilty of all the charges or not. But one thing is clear, Magu is not likely to have a fair hearing in the presidential panel that is probing him. Um, the office of uh, the Attorney General, actually the Minister of Justice, uh, has proven to be the number one enemy of Magu. And he is having about two representatives on that panel. The DSS that wrote two conflicting reports to the National Assembly when Magu was to be uh, screened, they have their representative there. Uh, other, I mean, NFIU, they have their representative. NFIU has a running battle with, with, with Mago. Not even the police force, because Mago has several seniors who want to occupy that office that is occupying. So a lot, I mean, Mago is working in, in the midst of enemies. But nobody who fights corruption sincerely can make friends with those elements that I have highlighted about, especially the politicians. That is why we have to uh, up the agitation for the separation of the Ministry of uh, Justice away from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation so that the minister can be a politician and continue to defend his um, colleagues but the attorney general will be defending the people. The people will uh, have more confidence in the attorney general if he's um, a thoroughbred uh, professional that will want to create a, uh, a, a kind of uh, level of integrity for himself, a record of integrity for himself. Those are the people who want to commit their life to the fight against corruption. Nobody fight corruption and make friends with the corrupt element. And you know, corrupt element has enormous resources to deploy to towards buying off anybody that wants to start, I mean, stand on their way. If Mago had been purchasable, he would have uh, not faced the kind of humiliation that he has been facing today. If he has allowed himself to be used by this corrupt element, he wouldn't have been facing this uh, humiliation today. So the, 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 the kind of people that we need to lead the fight of corruption, I mean, the fight against corruption is Magu. 
So what the president needs to do is to protect the tenor of the leader of EFCC to okay. ensure that come rain, come shine, Debo, he, yes. our, our time is fast. Spent. Let me also get your opinion on some other issues because we're looking okay. at uh, what the vice president did say. And one of the things he said is that we need to make corruption unattractive. Is this just theoretical? How practicable is? I think you've mentioned part of it. But how can we make corruption unattractive? Part of the things you mentioned is the fact that this corrupt element can get good lawyers, very expensive lawyers. Why the EFCC mm. or whoever agency is fighting corruption probably <laughs> may be owing some of their lawyers. So how do we correct this? The first thing we need to do is to develop a national ideology that we put up a ceiling in how much individuals can have in his kitty. It will put up a ceiling on how many property, I mean, how much property individuals or co corporate entities can acquire. And that everybody should uh, be ready to render account of uh, whatever is found in his or her procession. Uh, first and foremost, if there is upper ceiling and people know that if they steal, they won't be able to enjoy it. Stealing will be unattractive to them. Then when you look at uh, how people launder money, they launder money through professionals. And uh, for CSO like us, so, some, of, I mean, some, some of these corrupt elements launder money through uh, CSOs, professionals, and so on and so forth. But there is Kumul. If, I mean, the, if Kumul is working the way it's supposed to work, it means that any individual that is uh, uh, transacting business that involves up to one million naira should report to Kumul. Any professional that is engaging in any services that is up to five million should render uh, accounts to Kumul. The same thing with NFIU. So these safeguards are already on the ground. You talk about TSA, you talk about um, uh, BVN. All of these are safeguards that will make corruption to become unattractive. And that is why, because of the implementation of all of these safeguards, that is why a lot of corrupt elements are abandoning their loot. You know what happened in Osborne Towers, um, Falomon Shopping Complex, Kaduna uh, Airport, where people abandon humongous amount of money. Why? Because they, they, it, it has become very difficult for them to use uh, financial institutions to launder this money. They can no longer use professional to launder this money. That is why they have to abandon them. Wow. Now, this is a way to make corruption unattractive. Now, any individual that own property that is far ahead of their uh, legitimate income should be able to render an account of what engagement, I mean, what uh, business he did to give to have given him that much nah, allowance to uh, to acquire such property. Now, if everybody is accountable, then it will become difficult for anybody to accumulate wealth. Okay. The, they so were, basically, they were, yes. time, time is spent, and probably let me just give you 10 seconds to say this. How yeah. can they implement this? I've heard the word political will, but how should it be done? You see, the political will is the capacity to implement the extant laws. A lot of uh, laws, rules, and regulations are available, but uh, because of those, the fear of those that are involved, okay. uh, those in authorities have not been able to implement them. Then what should happen is that the laws must be implemented. Everybody must be made equal before the law. Okay. There should be checks and balances. And anybody that cannot justify his sources of wealth should not be allowed to occupy any position of authority, Thank you so much, whether Debo. elective or uh, appointive. Thank Once you so all much. of these are done, only good people will govern us, and Beautiful. we will be happy for it. Uh, I, I think posterity will be fair to you over that comment. Thank you so much, Debo Adenio, the executive chairman of CACO. We're able to make up for the time lost, and we hope that... Uh, 
it will go a long way in checking the excesses of public office holders, even people at the lower cadre who are involved in some form of corruption or the other. Thank you once again. And also thank you to Nelson Ekujumi, who spent his time to also uh, give his own thoughts on this issue. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we go to Edo State as protesters storm the streets to question Governor Obaseki's plan to get loan. We'll be right back.